to ramp up testing. Right you're so, now, you're so, you're so disgraceful. It's so disgraceful the way you say that. Let, let me just listen. President Trump has long been known for his clashes with broadcast and cable news reporters. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. According to most White House staff and correspondents you speak with, though, the journalist who drafts President Trump the craziest is Jeff Mason with Reuters. The, the question, sir, was what did you want President Zelensky to do about Pres Vice President Biden and his son, Hunter? Are you talking to me? Yeah, it was just a follow-up of what I just asked listen, you, sir. Listen, listen. You ready? We have the president of Finland. Ask him a question. I have one for him. I just wanted to follow up on the one that I asked you, which did was, you hear what me? did you want Did you hear me? Yes, Ask sir. him a question. I, I will. But I've my... given you a long answer. Ask <laughs> this gentleman a question. Don't be rude. No, sir. I don't want to be rude. I just wanted you to have a chance to answer the question that I asked I've you. I've answered everything. It's a whole hoax. And you know who's playing into the hoax? People like you and the fake news media. Ah, yes. The fake news media. Well, Jeff Mason isn't a traditional television reporter. He doesn't preen for the cameras. He's a wire service guy. And we recently got another reminder that there's something about this no-nonsense approach that Jeff Mason has that cuts President Trump very deeply. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for watching. White House staff say that President Trump understands the self-promotional game that so many television reporters often engage in. And of course he should. Self-promotion is Donald Trump's M.O., and then there's Jeff Mason. The mild-mannered White House correspondent approaches his job with the idea that the news is more important than the person delivering it. How refreshing, right? Well, not if you're Donald Trump. Take a look at this exchange from Thanksgiving when Mason pressed President Trump about the Electoral College and the possibility President Trump might someday concede. Well, yeah. President, yeah, please, go ahead. Mr. President, if the Electoral College votes for Joe Biden on December 14th, will you concede? And I, I, it's going to be a very hard thing to concede because we know there was massive fraud. So as to whether or not I can get this apparatus moving this quickly, because time isn't on our side. Everything else is on our side. Facts are on our side. It's a, it's a possibility. They're trying to look between you people. Don't answer, Don't talk to me that way. You're just a, you're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to. I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. They stormed the Capitol, clashing with police, breaking windows, scaling the scaffolding, fights breaking out in restricted areas of the building, agents with guns drawn, their fingers on the trigger, guarding the barricaded door. Since those riots at the U.S. Capitol, the Trump Organization has lost two of its banks, its e-commerce vendor, several real estate agents. The Trump name has been restricted from the PGA from holding golf tournaments. There will be no tournaments at the Scottish golf course either. Facebook, Twitter, other social media have banned Donald Trump. And all of this comes at a very precarious time. These rejections come at a time when the Trump Organization owes more than $400 million in debt and loans that are looming that will soon be called. So the pressure on Donald Trump and his organization is certainly intense right now. And even the little things can add up. The Trump hotels, for example, they've been hurting over the last year because of the pandemic and the fewer number of people who've been staying at those hotels. And even something like losing a $17 million contract with the city of New York, well, that can be painful. Eric Trump, one of the Trump sons, has been running the Trump organization ever since his dad became president. He's not expressing much concern about any financial challenges with the Trump Organization, and he's blaming some of these contracts being canceled on what he calls the liberal cancel culture. Quote, if you disagree with them, if they don't like you, they try and cancel you. That's what Eric Trump told the Associated Press. 